Good morning, everyone, and welcome to CSL Midtown. And we are not in Midtown Atlanta. We are all over, thanks to the internet. And I am actually in Rome, Georgia, which is about an hour from Atlanta. And I am not Reverend Dr. Bob Dean, as you can see. I'm Reverend Cynthia McCarthy. And it's my pleasure to serve on the Board of Trustees here at CSL Midtown. Dr. Bob is enjoying a well-deserved day off, so we wish him the best. And he has given me the keys to the castle here today, so I'm gonna see how much trouble I can get in. So this weekend has a lot happening. I don't know if you're feeling all the energy too, but yesterday was the summer solstice, longest day of all that sunshine. Today is a new moon. There is a solar eclipse happening. And today is Father's Day. So we wish a happy Father's Day to all our fathers out there. So we celebrate you dads. We celebrate dads who are no longer with us. And we honor the paternal aspects of spirit, such as the nature of life, that all it asks and all it wants is the opportunity to show up and appear. You are that opportunity. And so am I. And so it is. Now, we usually start by reading together our Declaration of Principles. Vance will put that up on the screen. And if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. And this is a great explanation of who we are and what we believe, if you'd read this with me. I believe in one God, one absolute power, and first cause to all things. I believe that this power is perfect love, and it creates out of a desire to express love. I believe that all thought is creative and how I choose to think creates my personal experience. I believe in the unity of all life in the immortality of the individual soul forever unfolding. I believe in the eternal goodness, the eternal loving kindness, and the eternal givingness of God to all. And so it is. Now, our spiritual center has prayer practitioners who serve as the healing arm of our community. They have extensive training and experience with affirmative prayer. And this is the part of our service where we invite one of them to come forward and share their insight and lead us in a spiritual mind treatment. So it's my great privilege to introduce someone who blesses me and truly blesses this center, a friend of mine, Maya Fuller. Thank you, Reverend Cynthia, uh, and thank you for leading us today. I know that you're a wordsmith of sorts. I've read your uh, blog posts, they're fantastic, and I'm sure you have an impactful, powerful, powerful message for us today, and I look forward to enjoying it. And I also wanna say good morning and welcome to everyone who is joining us in our growing and thriving community today via Zoom, Facebook Live, or in the Facebook or YouTube replays. And let us also extend a special hello, welcome, and happy Father's Day again to all dads and surrogate dads out there. We love you, we bless you, and we appreciate you. As you might know, since you've been here, uh, those I see many faces who have been here with us for a while, since the beginning of the year, Reverend Bob has been participating along with many other spiritual centers within the Centers for Spiritual uh, Living Global Community and giving talks about a common monthly theme and weekly topic within that theme. The theme for June is Mindfulness for Mavericks, and this week's topic is Mindful Speech for Mavericks. So as students and practitioners of spiritual met metaphysics, as students and practitioners of new thought, as students of, and practitioners of the science of mind, I would like to introduce or bring to our attention one of the tools that we have within our practice to use to use our words. And we use it coupled with our imagination, but we use this tool to create for ourselves the life, uh, the life that our hearts desire. So what, what are examples of tools? And affirmations are an example of one of the tools that we use that use our words to help us create the life that we want. So we use affirmations to remind ourselves of the greater truth about different aspects of, of, um, of our life. 
and of our truth. And since we know that there's power in the word to help us bring these into manifestation, we speak affirmations in the present tense with the expectation that the words that we speak become our reality. So I'm sure most of you already know about affirmations, but I'm just saying all this in the off chance that we have someone new visiting with us or who happens to be unfamiliar with the term. Um, so a definition that Jack Canfield has given of the word affirmation is that they are simple, positive statements declaring specific goals in their completed states. So for example, if I have the goal to be happy, healthy, prosperous, I'm going to just say, I am healthy. I am happy. I am prosperous with the sense of expectation that, the, that I experience those things and that they become my reality right now. So we use affirmations very regularly within this teaching. So other tools that we use related to the power of our word within this teaching are journaling or writing down what our ideal life would look like and feel like. And of course, we use uh, prayer treatments. Uh, those are tools that we that uh, utilize the power of words as well. So the tool that I want to highlight today is a creation tool that is a kind of less widely talked about, but is extremely powerful. So I want to remind us about them today as we focus on mindful speech for Mavericks. It's a tool that utilizes the power of the word in a small and intimate group setting with people of like mind. And it is called, I call it actually, a spiritual mastermind or a manifestation mastermind group. You might be familiar with uh, this kind of mastermind group because uh, you've experienced it in one of our centers or a related center in the past. Or you might know mastermind groups more of the um, being the professional kind. Um, but they're very similar in nature. And I'd say that uh, in general, the person who ma made mastermind groups or mastermind alliances most famous is likely Napoleon Hill in his classic book, Think and Grow Rich, where he describes a mastermind group as a friendly alliance among people to support each other with their plans. So with a spiritual or, or manifestation mastermind group, you get together with a couple one or a couple of other or a few other people who also understand and believe in the power of thoughts, feelings, imagination, and words to form the reality of one's body, life, world, affairs, and experience. So the way it works is simple. You gather a group of like-minded friends or even just acquaintances to basically serve as practitioners of sorts for one another. I've been participating in these mastermind groups for the past 20 years, and I've almost always met the people in the groups right at my spiritual center. In fact, I actually have one uh, mastermind group going on right now that includes a woman who lives in another country, but whom I met when she visited our center in Midtown one day while she was in Atlanta. So all you do when you come together with the, these like-minded people, um, whether it's be in person, via Zoom, uh, telephone, or whatever means, uh, what you do is you're gonna to come together and you're gonna share from your heart, using your words, your dreams and aspirations and goals for your life that you feel that spirit is calling you to bring into manifestation for your life. So for example, I'm asking and declaring to the universe in front of my mastermind partners that I am healthy, fit, and active. I have a thriving spiritual life and vibrant personal and family life in which I consistently have rich and meaningful experiences and relationships. I am happy, joyful, beautiful, and prosperous. I live the life of my dreams. My husband and I have a close, loving relationship, and we experience freedom in our lifestyle so that we are able to earn our income from anywhere in the world as we travel the world extensively, and so on and so on, like whatever my, my request is, my statement is, right? And now that takes courage. It takes vulnerability, it takes honesty, it takes willingness, but you are putting the words out there for others to hear, and then their job is to agree with you. Their job is to see it along with you, to know it with you and for you, and knowing that all that you are asking of the universe and all, you, all that you are declaring to be so is already yours in spirit and available to you right now on this manifest plane. And as such, 
believing, knowing, having the like mind with you, agreeing with you, they then are going to use their words to reflect back to you what you just said. So they're being your practitioners, right? They're saying your partners each take a turn and they say, Maya, I stand in agreement with you that you and your husband live the lives of your dreams. You are healthy, fit, active, happy, experiencing wonderful relationships et cetera, et cetera, right? So the person is reflecting it back to you. They are like using their words, the power of their words to bless, bless you as well. And then you're doing it for them as well, right? So there's this collective mastermind alliance of treating for one another and holding for one another and knowing, I'm so sorry about that. I've become so popular right now, <laughs> um, knowing the truth for one another. And it's just that simple. So you have a group of, of people with whom you meet periodically and for whom in the meantime, in between your meetings, you are holding the truth for them that you saw and with them and you spoke with them and, um, and you spoke over their lives with and for them. So this is a bit, like I said, it's a very powerful tool that has helped me to manifest many of my dreams. I manifested my beautiful marriage, more money, world travel, and more. <laughs> Uh, and as a bonus, it has given me the gift of love and friendship with my mastermind partners who also have become my lifelong friends. So I am curious to know your thoughts about spiritual uh, mastermind groups or manifestation mastermind groups. Let us hear from you in the comment section, whether on Zoom or on Facebook. Have you ever been in this kind of mastermind group? And if so, what, what, what was your experience? Is it something, um, if not, it's not something you've experienced before. Is it something you would like to? You never know. You might find your next mastermind partner right here in the community chat section. So now, as we move into our treatment section, I invite you to get comfortable and relaxed. Please feel free to close your eyes and accept these words that I'm speaking for myself. Accept them for yourself along with me as I speak them in the first person because the first person is a very powerful way to use our words. I recognize the one as the power, the presence, and the love of all that is. Some call it spirit, some call it God or universe or Allah or Buddha or infinite mind divine being, the light, a myriad other terms that resonate within. Right now, I call it infinite intelligent life, God life, from which I cannot be separated because this intelligent life force is all there is. It is all. This life force, this allness is my life right now as I speak these words to know the truth that there is power in my word. Power to form and shape my reality. Power to, to form my life, world, and affairs. So I use my words for good. I think thoughts of good, of wholeness, of life, love, health, peace, and prosperity. I speak these words over my life and over the lives the lives of others. I'm impeccable with my word and I use it as a tool similar to a paintbrush to paint beauty on the canvas of my life. I'm so thankful and grateful to have this tool, this powerful creative word that allows me to bless myself and others at all times, wherever I am. I speak life because I am life. And so are you and so it is. Now, before I go, I just want to say that many of you might know that Reverend Cynthia is the host of our Facebook page. So she's doing a wonderful job getting the information out there on Facebook. So I, I would like to um, ask you to su support Reverend Cynthia and us by giving this post a like and sharing it with other like-minded people that you might know out there. As I said earlier, I'm a member of the Board of Trustees for our center, and I'm also an interfaith minister. And I always have this fear that when I tell people I'm an interfaith minister, they think that means I signed up on the internet somewhere and 
paid $40 and got a card to put in my wallet and can do weddings and marry my friends, which is a thing, apparently, people can do that. <laughs> but that's not the kind of interfaith minister I am. Um, I went to school and studied holistic theology for several years, and there was a lot of crossover between these different faith traditions and new thought principles and science of mind teaching. So I'm very honored to be able to fill in for Dr. Bob today and give today's talk. When I saw that today's topic was mindful speech, I was very excited because that is just right up my alley. I work and live in affirmations and positive speech. And the first thing I thought about when I heard mindful speech was The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. If you aren't familiar with that book, I highly recommend it. Uh, he's a spiritual teacher who writes about the wisdom of the ancient Toltec, and he shares these four agreements that help us to create personal power and to live our highest good. And the first agreement is to be impeccable with your word, which sounds a lot like being mindful with our speech. Now, he admits that it is the most challenging agreement, but it's very important because we know our words are powerful. Words are the first step in creation. We all know the scripture, in the beginning was the word. All of creation was spoken into being. Now, we as individuals use this same power we create through our language. Now, no one explains this better than Ernest Holmes, so let me share a little quote by him. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, now, what he says is, when the Bible states that the word of God moves upon the face of the deep and produces creation, it means that the divine spirit speaks itself into existence by the power of its word. Now that's one part of it. And then when the Bible states that man is made in the image and likeness of God, it is telling us that each one of us as an individual reproduces the creative imagination and energy of the divine mind. So this is just a fancy way of saying God's creative power is our power. Now, we can also potentially cause great harm with our words. That's the other side of this. We're creating either way, positively or negatively, whether we're aware of this spiritual law or not. Now, in the Four Agreements, Don Miguel Ruiz gives these example stories of people misusing their word, particularly with regard to children. Mothers, fathers, teachers, ministers, people usually in positions of authority influencing a child's belief because of their words. Now, children believe everything adults say. And that is beautiful and scary at the same time. For instance, if we're told repeatedly that we're stupid when we're a child, we grow up believing that about ourselves. Louise Hay has a lot of exercises that explore the negative messages that we might receive as a child. Now, the flip side of this is that if we're told as a child that we're brilliant and we can do anything and we're smart, we grow up believing that too. Now, today being Father's Day, I was reflecting a lot about my own father and things he used to say to me. So I thought I would show you a picture of my dad. Nope, that's not it. How about that? There we go. This is me and my dad in 2007. He passed away in 2008, long before I was finished needing a dad. I was very fortunate that I don't have any negative examples, really, of how he used to talk to me. But I do have a lot of positive ones. And there was one thing in particular that he used to say to me a lot when I was a teenager. Now, I don't know if you know this about teenagers, but they can be a little bit self-absorbed and they tend to complain a lot. And 
honestly, I was no different. So I would inevitably be complaining about something or complaining about my friends. And my dad would always say, Cynthia, different strokes for different folks. That was his little catchphrase that he said all the time. And I would roll my eyes and think he was ridiculous, of course. But now as an adult, when I look back at that message he was conveying with his words, I can see that that really sunk in and I grew up believing that. That became a belief for me. The spiritual equivalent of different strokes for different folks is honor all paths to God, which is a very interfaith, inclusive, new thought idea of a universal God. So in a sense, he led me to interfaith ministry. Thank you, Dad. So my dad's words were very powerful to me. Our words to others are powerful because they create beliefs in them. Our words to ourselves are powerful because they create a belief in us. And we know it is done unto us as we believe. So this is really worth paying attention to. This idea of Mindful speech is all a creative spiritual principle. Now, I love to find illustrations and examples of spiritual principles out in the regular human world. And my favorite illustration of this idea that our words have power is the work of Masaru Emoto. He was the Japanese scientist who studied water molecules and he's famous for photographing the uh, crystals that formed in the water. And he published them in several books that were bestsellers. And you probably already know that the human body is made up of, made up of about 70% water. But did you know that the human fetus, early on in its development, is as much as 99% water? Life began for all of us as watery little goo balls. Talk about the essence of life, right? Now, Emoto knew that water expresses itself and he wanted to find a way to capture this and document it. So that's why he started freezing the crystals of the water and photographing them. So the first thing he discovered was that water responded to the vibrations of different kinds of, mu of music. So the water that was exposed to classical music formed beautiful, elegant crystals. The water that was exposed to violent, heavy metal music that had negative lyrics formed fragmented and deformed crystals or no crystals at all. So the negative song lyrics got him thinking about the vibration of words and the message that they convey. So he wrote words down on paper, words and phrases, and wrapped the paper around the bottles of water in his lab. And it sounds kind of crazy because it's like, really, is the water going to read? You know, and he knew it was such a strange premise, but his approach was, well, so let's just see what happens. And his books are full of these pictures that show his results. And they're also, some are on his website, which is masuro emotonet And what he found was that, for instance, Water exposed to the words love and gratitude create attractive, well-formed crystals. Isn't that beautiful? It looks like a beautiful diamond you want on your finger, right? So that is love and gratitude formed that beautiful, perfect crystal. And water exposed to negative expressions like I can't do it or name calling like you fool formed broken, fragmented crystals. This one is for, I can't do it. And when I see, when I look at that is, you can see the potential was there for a beautiful crystal, for something perfect. And yet it's all broken and destroyed because it's a negative affirmation, I can't do it. So let me, so his point is, the vibration of good words has a positive effect on our world, but the vibration of negative words has the power to destroy. He was demonstrating spiritual law and probably didn't even realize it. Now, if you think about this a little bit more deeply, 
that was just water in petri dishes and bottles in a laboratory. Think about the water in plants, trees, animals, lakes, rivers, oceans, the water in the ground, the water in our human bodies. All of it is an endless opportunity for vibrational effect. It's like the meme that you've probably seen before. Uh, if speaking kindly to plants helps them grow, imagine what speaking kindly to humans can do. And I would add, you know, imagine what speaking kindly to the whole world could do. Emoto's research showed us that water is always listening and creating. So whatever word you use for the power behind everything, God, spirit, universe, source, life, it's always listening. There's a line in the science of mind where Ernest Holmes says, it is as though there were a universal ear listening to and hearing everything that we say, feel, or think, and reacting to it. He was ahead of his time. It's just like an Alexa, right? <laughs> With our speech, we have the power to create beauty and harmony for ourselves and the world. Or we can create chaos and destruction. Which one we create depends on how mindful we want to be with our speech. Now, there was a time in my life that I look back on and see that I was using this spiritual principle improperly. I was creating chaos and destruction. This was before I became all hippie woo woo spiritual. And I was not being mindful with my speech because I hadn't yet learned how important that was. Just for like, backstory and the conditions I was experiencing, I had gone through a divorce. I was a single mom. I had a very low paying job and no real career prospects. And I thought I was being funny, just complaining about my life with my family and friends and, and whining and saying things like, oh, I hate my life. And I would say this over and over again. And the universe, life, capital L, life, the spirit within me was always listening, creating, always saying yes. You hate your life? Let's create more of that together. Let's create more to hate. I experienced a laundry list of chaos and destruction, things breaking down all around me. When I look back now, it's like comical how many things went wrong. It wasn't funny at the time though. Car repairs unexpected bills, plumbing leaks. I had mold under my house. Uh, a neighbor's tree fell on the roof of my house. I had conflict in relationships. I had injuries and medical bills and on and on. I was creating chaos for myself with my words. Now, fortunately, I have since learned the value of being mindful of my speech and the importance of affirming good things about my life and the life of others. I feel like there's a gap between the point where we intellectually understand the power of our words. You know, we can hear this and intellectually understand it, but there's a gap between that point and the point where we're so mindful of that, that we implement it and apply it effectively. So, that's where I am. I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm living somewhere in that gap. And I think most people do. I'll tell you a little secret. I am very aware of this spiritual principle and I fail at it pretty much every day. But that doesn't mean I stop trying. We always have the free will and choice to think a new thought, to speak new words. We can choose to speak of our joys, our gratitude, and our love. We can claim our highest good even before we see it. That's the best time to do it. The more we believe our words are powerful, the more powerful our words become. That is what faith is. We can't underestimate our ability to be transformed by the renewing of our mind in each new day, and really in each new moment. 
So just in case you find yourself accidentally complaining or speaking negatively about yourself or others, try not to give in to that natural inclination we have to judge ourselves. But instead, gently, lovingly, make the decision and the choice right then in that present moment to speak differently. Spirit within you is always listening, and that to me is so exciting. It's a great responsibility, but even more so, it's a great opportunity. Now, when I teach classes and workshops, I love to give homework. So I'm going to give you homework today. <laughs> uh, so, whoops, this is what I would like for you to consider. These three questions, take this with you today. How would you speak if you knew that life within you was always listening, always creating? What would you declare about your life? What would you affirm for yourself and others? Let's take this into prayer. Hopefully you are already comfortable, but let's just be conscious, conscious of your comfort and take a few deep breaths. Close your eyes if you'd like and think about the life force within you. Go to that place in your mind where you recognize that God is all there is. Whatever word you use for God, the one power, one presence, infinite intelligence, life. Know with me that this divine intelligence simply is. It is always present, always creating. I know that this power is with me now, that I am united with it completely. I know this is true for me and I know this is true for everyone listening. I am using this power and I know that my word operating through it will cause it to bring into my experience all the good that I desire. I accept and trust that my word is God's word and it is creative. I speak life into being with an intention of love, oneness, peace for ourselves and all living things, knowing that there is no opposition to this. I claim abundance and health. I affirm joy and harmony in all my relationships and all my encounters. I'm inspired and deeply comforted knowing that the power of my word is always available to me. I have such gratitude for this creative process, for my understanding of it, and I am so grateful for that universal ear, ever present, always listening, always co-creating through my word. I release, release this now knowing my word is complete and perfect, and so it is. Thank you, everybody. I am Vance Blue. I am a member of your board of trustees and <clears throat> here to go into our next stop is um, our affirmation of prosperity. I'm gonna share the screen so we can say this together. I live in a universe of abundance. As I freely and joyfully give, I join in the divine flow and all that I share with life returns to me, multiplied abundantly. And so it is. And we got some announcements coming up. Thank you, Reverend Cynthia. That was awesome. And um, so we got um, this month's theme is Mindfulness for Mavericks. It's an awesome theme. Um, next Sunday, June 28th, Reverend Dr. Bob Dean will be back with us with Mindful Action. And then during the week, like Cynthia was saying, if you need to get your mind in, in order, you're having trouble with your self-talk or anything else that's going on, 
Tuesday afternoons from 12 to 12.30 and Thursday evenings from 6 to 7 on this same Zoom meeting that you joined this on. Dr. Bob Dean is doing those meetings. Um, we got our new contribution system up and running and um, it's working really well. It's really easy to use. It's in the chat and it's on the screen, www.cslmidtown.org. Um, and there's a donate button right there on that screen or the donate screen. We have awesome practitioners. So if you've got anything going on in your life that you want help with, more help with, something troubling you, anything that's going on, we've got practitioners to help. So reach out. Um, they're on the website too. They're, they're listed on the website as well as um, several here on the meeting today. And we are here to help you in your life, grow your life into being the best life that it can be for you. And I'm going to turn it back over to Reverend Cynthia. Okay, I'm going to close things out here with our affirmation of life. If you pop that up on the screen. We just learned about the power of our words, so feel free to shout this loud and proud. I leave this place now knowing something better than I knew, than I knew before. I go forth into the world with a heart full of love and a mind full of good sense. I look at the world in a greater way, knowing that I have within me everything I need to create the life I desire. I give thanks for this understanding, and I am grateful for the spirit of life that lives through me. And so it is. <laughs>